Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all are ready to receive this information that I have on some of the food shortages, disruptions, and what is driving this and what to watch out for. So we're gonna start off right off the bat here, folks. We're gonna be talking about Walmart. Now I deliver to Walmart, I'm a delivery driver. I've been delivering to this Walmart for over eight years. I know the shipping and receiving manager very well. You really yeah. need to start paying attention to your best buy dates. You see, Walmart is closing a lot of their stores and stuff, 154 in the United States, and a lot of them are in the South. So down here in the South, it's affecting, I think, a lot more people than it is like in the people in the North. You you can go online and you can Google the stores that are closing. There's a whole list of them. They list them by state and where they're at. So you can find out if maybe your local Walmart store is closing. But what you have to watch out for, folks, is the Best Buy dates. A lot of this stuff that's coming from some of these other stores and stuff, they're starting to shuffle it around and to try to make the shelves look full in the said areas where they are having issues. Some of the busier stores and stuff are having a very hard time in the higher populated areas of keeping things on the shelves. So it's something that you really want to pay attention to. Walmart is also in the process of shrinking their shelving systems down. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of the products, which we have talked about, this is no new news. If you've been watching any of my Sunday videos on food shortages and things, so what they're doing is, is they keep condensing everything down. Now they've had to keep condensing things down for over the last month because they're not getting a lot of the products that are the, say, quote, hot products, the products that people want. All right. And they're getting a lot more stuff in there. They're getting a lot more of anything that they can get in there, any type of a food product or anything else to put on the shelves, whether it's healthy, it's not healthy. At this point, they just don't care. They want the shelves to look full. They don't want the shelves looking empty. All right. It's a matter of uh, perspective of Walmart to make sure that everything looks nice and tidy and neat. All right, so when you walk in there and you are looking for food and stuff, it doesn't look empty, but what you're looking for, you just may not find it. So it's kind of like a smoke and mirror type of situation, but the shelves have been shrinking on a lot of the different products. Canned goods, rice, and pastas are the top three. Now, this shipping and receiving manager also told me that they were in a meeting about a week or so ago, and they have been mentioning that there could be, coming down the pike, if things do not start to straighten up soon, limitations put on the top selling products to help keep them in the store to keep things available for everyone. Now, this is just something I'm throwing out there. I don't know if this is going to take place, but there is talk of it that's going on. Now, one thing you really have to remember is, and you want to make sure that you are watching your dates and stuff. This person also did suggest to me is if you are standing there and you're looking at, say, boxes of pasta or boxes of can or canned goods and those type of things, what you can do is, is always move a few cans around because what they've been trying to do is filter them in instead of just loading the shelf up with the product. They try to filter those older cans in with the newer cans. Just giving you a little piece of information here. Now, let's talk about other stores. Now, these stores, um, basically, I just struck up a conversation with uh, a manager. Uh, we'll talk about Winn-Dixie. You may have a Winn-Dixie in your area, depending on where you live. If not, it's just another grocery store chain that we have here in Florida. And I think they're pretty much over the Southeast. But I got talking with this grocery store manager and I had noticed that some things have been moved from where they were on the store shelves down the aisle to an end cap. Now, they were explaining to me that I, cause I asked, I knew where the product was, where they moved it to, but I played dumb, okay? And I said, wait a minute. I said, they used to be right here. And I told him, I said, what I'm looking for used to be right here, but it's not here anymore. And, you know, there's a sign here that says new products coming soon. So what does that mean? You know? So then they told me that they walked me down and showed me that they're on the end cap. And I was like, well, 
is this where they're going to be? And I was told, yes, this is where they're going to be for right now. And I'm like, well, why is it staying here instead of down there? Because actually the end cap was split between three other different products. Now, what are they doing? So I was explained by this manager that the reason that they are doing that is because they don't have enough product to fill up the whole shelf where that product used to be. And some of the other products that I'm seeing on the other end caps, what they are doing is they're doing the same thing. There's enough product to put on an end cap and share it with three other products. So you have one product on the top, two shelves, then you have another product and then another product towards the bottom because there's not enough to put on the shelves and then they spread out everything else that is on the shelves down the aisles. That's not that product. So it's their top selling products. So they're having issues also of getting these goods into the stores. So this is what's taking place is all these different stores are basically trying to cover up what is going on. Nobody wants to have empty shelves in the stores nowadays, now do they? Now the whole diesel price is going to come into effect and this diesel price is going to come back around to where it's going to force even the large stores like Walmart. If this diesel price stays where it's at for a very long time or if it climbs more, your prices even in Walmart are going to have to go up. You see, they all have to keep the stockholders happy. They all have to make certain numbers. It doesn't matter what they charge us, all right? They'll charge us whatever they want to charge us as long as the stockholders are happy. So what do we have to do here, folks? You got to make sure that you're getting out there and possibly trying to do whatever you can to be prepped and ready. I have a video that's going to be coming out later on this week, and it's going to be on how to build your emergency stockpile. And I have a great way to do it. And I hope that everybody can tune in for that video. And this way here, it gives you an idea of how you can do this with as little as five bucks a week. I came up with this great idea and I'm gonna pitch it out there to you guys on how to build your emergency stockpiles with five bucks a week. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. And once again, folks, I appreciate everything that you do for my channel. Share this video with all your friends and family. Keep prepping, folks. And until next time, I will catch all of you on the flip side.